Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Forward. Well it's been exactly two months today since we last published the video which is um, far too long. Uh, but there are big things happening, big changes going on um, which uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about. Um, two big changes really. The first one, uh, we're moving. Um, we have um, decided that this property is no longer working for us. There's a couple of things about it which uh, don't quite work. It's a lovely property and uh, certainly from a workshop point of view it's absolutely awesome. Um, but there's a few other bits about the property that don't work for us. Now, we put the house on the market, oh, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, um, and we had an amazing response. Um, we had over 32 people view the property, uh, and we had a number of offers to choose from, and we have decided to let the, let the property go. Um, of course, now the challenge is finding a suitable property for us to go to. Um, so that's what we're currently working on um, and we've got, hopefully we'll have some more news on that later this week. Um, but the good news, or I guess the important news, is uh, obviously just to reassure you guys that we're going to continue, right? So one of the challenges in finding the right property is actually in making sure that we've got suitable workshop space so that we can continue working on the Ferguson and beyond the Ferguson as well. Um, you know, I've got aspirations of doing a partial rebuild on the International um, once, the, once the Ferguson has been completed. Um, so that is the plan, um, that's the big news, and um, that's the, well, the first bit of big news. Um, uh, but anyway, I do wanted to let you know that that's kind of what's been going on. So. With all of that, um, we haven't really had an opportunity to do a video. We've uh, obviously needed to do a fair amount of work to get the property ready for, to go on the market in the first place. And then of course, uh, you know, to, to do the viewings um, and, and make ourselves available for people to come and see the property, etc., etc. So it has been a little bit manic. Um, we're now, as I say, at that stage where We've um, effectively sold the property and uh, we're, we're busy looking for the next one for us to go to, which is a little bit time consuming as well, but uh, not quite as bad. Um, anyway, enough on that. Now, as most of you know, Anglo Agripos have been sponsoring this channel for two and a half years now. Uh, so for two and a half years, we've enjoyed a fantastic uh, relationship and partnership with Anglo Agripos. Uh, who have sponsored us, they've given us, uh, you know, provided us with all of those parts that we've needed for the Ferguson and a few of the parts that we needed for the International as well. And in return for that, we obviously have featured their branding, we have talked a lot about their parts, talked a little bit about the quality of them, um, and generally promoted them as a business to, to you, our viewers. Now, that relationship is still very strong, um, it's still a great partnership, but Anglo Agriparts have gone through a bit of a change recently. Um, some of you may have noticed if you visited the website you would have seen that there's a new uh, little emblem and little logo at the top. Uh, basically Anglo Agriparts is now a division of KMP brand and that's KM KMP Kilo Mike Papa. They are um, a large provider or large manufacturer um, and distributor of uh, predominantly earth moving equipment parts, but they have also got an agricultural division which Anglo will now join or has now joined. Um, and what that means is that uh, what was Anglo Agriparts will essentially become their retail. Uh, arm for KMP brand. Now I don't know about you but I've never heard of KMP brand until a couple of weeks ago um, when, when, all of this, um, when all of this happened. Um, but it's worth taking a look at their website, um, certainly a very impressive website um, and I think the key thing to note is that KMP brand I, I believe, and again I'm no expert on this, but I believe is a much larger company than Anglo Agriparts is on its own. KMP brand have been a, I understand, have been a shareholder of Anglo Agriparts for a number of years. 
so they do know and understand the business um, and they are you know it's not they're not just coming in cold they have had a relationship with and they understand the um, agricultural um, parts division or parts business shall we call it so what does that mean well it means for the channel we will now be sponsored by KMP brand um, which is uh, obviously means we need to rebrand the workshop we need to change our clothing and our merchandise um, so with the wonders of digital video we're going to very very quickly and super quickly we are going to rebrand the workshop well there you go rebranded nice new jumper hoodie nice new cap and of course new sign for the workshop as well we actually have another one of those we're going to find the right place to put that more importantly perhaps once we move we'll we'll set them up properly um but that's the that's the new branding oh and they also sent us a pair of gloves which is pretty handy um a couple of those so that'll be those will be useful as well so again just a little bit more about this as i said uh kmp brand uh large um probably not very well known uh, certainly not kind of in the, shall we call it, the retail industry, um, but very large distributor and uh, manufacturer of um, parts for predominantly, as I said, mostly sort of earth moving equipment um, and uh, large agricultural um, distributor as well. So we welcome them to the channel. We look forward to working with them moving forward. Um, Anglo AgriParts uh, is still there. Uh, website is still live. Please, you know, go ahead and continue to to visit them um, for your parts. They will continue to operate, uh, as far as I know, certainly for the foreseeable future. Uh, but probably over the coming weeks and months, you'll see them rebranding as well. Um, obviously, they have a lot of stock, which is, uh, you know, obviously already branded, and I'm sure it'll take a while for for that to be worked through. Um, but hopefully in the coming weeks and months we'll start to see the, K the KMP brand uh, coming through uh, as we go. But yeah, please do continue to support Angler AgriParts um, uh, through the website. Obviously the same team is still there, so if you want to call, speak to the team, they're still there, still happy to help. Um, this is literally just a rebranding exercise for all intents and purposes. Um, this jumper is a bit small, I think I'm going to have to order a slightly larger one, it's a bit um, tight. But anyway, um, look, the, today's video uh, is, is a short one, other than yeah, all, of this, all this news. Um, but we're going to reassemble the gear lever. Um, so a number of videos back, uh, we, we dismantled it, um, along with the you know, when we were working on the steering box. Um, I've now managed to source the parts that we needed to basically put it together. Really, all it needed was two new pins um, and the gear lever um, knob, uh, right? That sits on top, a little little chrome one. So we managed to get one of those, and uh, we're going to reassemble that. And if uh, if we get as far, we'll actually get it re reassemble onto the tractor now. In terms of moving, um, as you probably aware, the tractor is, for all intents and purposes, now a rolling chassis. We finished the front um, axle, we finished the front, or basically redid all of the steering, um, and the, the front wheels can now go on to the tractor. So, in terms of moving, um, that's, you know, we, we will land up having to trailer it wherever we go. Um, but obviously with it being now being a rolling chassis that's going to be just that little bit easier. Um, so we're going to continue working on it as much as we can in the coming weeks until the move. Um, once we have moved I'm sure there's going to be uh, a bit of a break in transmission as you'd imagine as we try to get everything sorted and get everything set up uh, but hopefully not too long um, and then of course we will persevere and uh, continue and hopefully get this tractor finished. Um, I still have hopes of finishing it this year, but um, let, let's see how we get on. Anyway, so today's video, we, we're going to crack on with that. We'll get, I'll, I'll bring you over and show you what we've got in terms of the, um, the different parts. And then we'll go over to the other workbench and we will do the reassembly. Okay, so 
this is what we've got. Um, obviously, we've got the base plate, which has now been nicely cleaned. We've got the. Uh, this is the original sort of dust cap that goes over the top. I've not been able to find a replacement for that, so we're gonna we're gonna basically stick with that one. We've got the original spring, and as I said, I managed to get hold of a chromed uh, gear knob uh, for the top, and then of course we've got the main gear lever itself, and then my little pot here. We've got the um, captive ring for the to hold the spring in. We've got the pivot uh, um, rod. And then I've basically got two, um, uh, the, the two pins that we need. One to hold the gear knob on, um, and the other one to hold the bottom in here, the dust cap in here. Um, so anyway, so that's what we've got. Um, like I said, not a, this won't be a very long video. We just need to put this all back together, reassemble it, and uh, be on our way. But uh, so I'm going to take you over to the other workbench. Um, it's going to—I think it's going to be easier over there. We might need the vase just to hold things um, and get these pins in, for example. So I'll see you over there. Okay. So basically, this—I mean—it's a very simple assembly. This, right? So basically, your gear lever, gear lever comes in from the top. You've got that um, pivot pin goes in here that allows it to move this way but doesn't allow it to turn essentially so you can move it around like that but you can't turn it so that's what stops it from turning essentially and obviously keeps it in here as well on the other side you've got basically a, just a larger spring it's not particularly strong um, it's really just to provide a bit of tension for this ball joint to keep this ball joint um, in its place essentially and you've got a captive ring that holds that in place. Um, and then you've just got, as I said, the dust cover that goes over the top and then the gear knob that goes on the top. And you've got uh, these two pins, roll pins, that are, are found. Uh, one to hold the dust cap in place and one to hold the gear lever, I mean the gear knob in place. And that's basically it. Um, so relatively straightforward and easy assembly. But it's really important that this is nice and clean um, and if you if you find that your gear lever is maybe a little bit um, stiff or no, no, not not so much stiff, but if you feel there's a bit of grinding going on inside here, it probably means you've got a bit of dust in here, uh, maybe a bit of grit. Just take it apart, take it off, take it apart. It takes maybe five minutes, ten minutes to take it apart, clean that out, put a little bit of dab and grease in there to give it um you know, to 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 help it to. To work nicely again and you should be back up and running um, pretty pretty easily and straightforward so yeah so we're going to pop this together um, I'll get my favorite grease quickly there we go now we may need to move over to the vase because getting these pins and especially these two roll pins they, they might need a little bit of encouragement uh, one thing uh, about this dust cap, you can see I had to, I did have to file off a little bit here to get the old pin out, and what that means is that hole is now a little bit bigger than this side. I've sized it obviously for this one, and I've made it slightly longer so it will stick out ever so ever so slightly. We'll see how we go, but I'm I believe that that's going to be tight enough basically to stay in place and to hold it in place, um, so it should be fine. As soon as I can find a replacement dust cap. Um, I will, and it may not be new, I might have to find it um, essentially second hand. I decided to go with a, a new gear knob partly because they're available, but if, also if you look at this one it's quite badly pitted um, and although I might be able to polish that up, I, I just didn't want to put in the effort frankly, um, and I do believe that the chrome one will look better. So we're going to put that to one side and we'll carry on with this one. Right, so first job is let's get a little bit of grease inside here. We don't want a lot, or we don't need a lot. Um, you know, grease does attract dust, so you do want to be cautious. But at the same time, you can't not put some grease in here. It does need a little bit of lubrication. So we'll get that in there. And um, right, so now our gear, le gear lever can come in just like that and then this pin 
it kind of goes in from one side. You'll you'll be able to tell once you um, once you get going. It'll go one way but not the other essentially. And when you get to the other side, or when it gets to the other side, you might need to, need to give it a little bit of a tap just to get it in. There you go. That's in now. Easy as pie. We just clean up the excess grease now. Okay. Now the next part is to get the spring on. We just pop that in and hold it down. Now this captive ring definitely needs encouraging to get it on. I don't know if you remember when we took it off. It did um, pose a little bit of a challenge. There we go. Once it's on, you want to get the spring to sit inside the. There's like a lip inside there. You want the spring to sit in there. And there you go, that is essentially your gear lever assembly now assembled and you can see how that how that will operate. Okay. So next job really is to get the dust cap on. We just line up the holes. get this um, pin. Oh. It's just gone straight through. That's no good. I got the wrong one. Oh yeah, sorry, that was the wrong one. This is the right one. It's a little bit bigger. I'm just going to get that in there. Get it started. So I think that at this point I'm probably going to move over to the vase so that I can um, hold this in place. Let's see. Maybe we'll be lucky. Oh, there we go. Now, as I said, I've left that a bit longer. The idea is basically to um, to try and... Well, I'm going to basically file that down. Um, can you see that? Yeah. I'm going to file that down so that it um, is not sticking out quite as much as that. But what I will do is, um, I may even try and open it up a little bit just to hold that dust cap a little bit better. But look, that's in now and uh, good enough for now. And uh, yeah, look, the final job really is to get the gear, nib, gear knob on. And that's really easy, basically just the same again, right? So line it up, get the um, roll pin. You'll notice on roll pins, if you look very carefully, one, one side does have a bit of a chamfer on. And that's obviously just to help it get started. Um, so I always look for that and uh, put that side in first. Now this one, I think, is going to be a little bit more difficult. Let's see if we can get it started. There it goes. It is lovely so there you go so it's as easy as that that is reassembling the gear lever now what I'm going to do I'm going to sort out this pin and then we'll move over to the to the tractor and get this reinstalled uh, on the tractor okay so we're over at the uh, tractor now we've got the um, gear lever ready to put on um, I did also just very quickly make a gasket, so just with some gasket paper, because um, there wasn't one in the set for this, but um, that was really easy to make. You've seen me make gaskets before, um, it's not difficult. Anyways, right, um, so of course that gasket goes on like that now, we'll pop the gear lever on and off we go. It's really not difficult. Um, what we'll do, we'll get some grease. I'll just put a little bit of grease on this gasket 
just to make sure that it's um, nicely lubricated and more importantly that it will not um, get stuck if we do need to take this off again. Now what I also want to do, I'm going to put a little bit of grease down in the gear selectors um, just where the um, the gear lever ball runs inside there just to um, lubricate that up a little bit you remember when we took this off uh, took the um, steering cover off or the gearbox cover we um, we found a little bit of crud in there, a little bit of dirt, we had to clean that out so we'll just lubricate that so that there's not too much um, metal on metal, pure, uh, plain metal on plain metal. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit on this um, kind of ball as well. It's not actually a ball, it's sort of a half ball, if you see what I mean. There we go. Alright. Oops. Okay. But look, it's really simple just to um, pop that down. Now you may recall when we took this off, we made sure that the tractor was in neutral so that we knew which way around, or basically where it was when we put this back. So there's no guessing involved. Um, so we just pop a couple new washers on, put the nuts. Now I'm going to get a socket for the There we go. That should do it. And now selecting all the gears nicely and um, it's happy and neutral there as well we can find the start position just there and I can hear the switch off the starter switch operating so I'm happy with that and uh, that's another job done well there we go that's refitting or basically reassembling and refitting the gear lever uh, really easy to job. That, that, sorry, <laughs> really easy job to do. There's absolutely no excuse for having a sticky gear lever, if that makes sense. Um, pops off real easy. Um, I suppose the only two slightly challenging bits are getting it, when it, when disassembling is getting those two pins out. So the pin out that holds the gear knob, and then also the one that holds the gut, the uh, dust cover. But um, look, I've just. Um, used roll pins to put those so I knocked the old ones out they were they were badly rusted um, and I've just used roll pins to to um, you know, to put back in there and then all I've done is I've just knurled over the end um, once once they're in and it's as simple as that but um, yeah if you if you if you need to just pop it off clean it up um, it's not a very hard wearing part or a very hard working part um, so generally just a good clean and a bit of grease in there and you should be good to go again. Um, anyway, look, that's it for today. Um, you know, obviously, just want to welcome K KMP Brand to to the channel. We obviously look forward to working with them in the coming uh, weeks and months. It, as I said, it's been two and a half years um, that we've worked with Anglo. 
Um, and you know, we, we, we're really looking forward to working with them moving forward under the new brand. And um, yeah, long, long may it continue, essentially. Um, in terms of the move, obviously we'll keep you updated as we, as we go. A couple of um, weeks, I think, before we, um, we work out exactly where we're going. Uh, but as soon as we know more, we will keep you updated. Um, and of course, we may even capture a few videos of the Fergie being rehomed and um, we, we hope that you'll join us for that. Hope you all have a good week and uh, see you on the next video. Cheers for now.